There's the Sea Garden Diner waitress, emerging from the kitchen, steam rising from her heavy plates, swimming through the crowd toward my table, saying, hot please. There's the hot shamanic healer working the corner of 16th and Mermaid, ministering to the lonely at reasonable rates, saying, show me where it hurts, then I'll relieve it in the breeze. There's my sixth grade teacher, wielding her whip at the head of the class, braying, I didn't pull your hair, I squeezed your head. There's the junior high school girls in their skin-tight Jordache jeans who every night in my dreams joined me in my bed. But a few months after my bar mitzvah, my coming of age was sanctified by a professional woman of the cloth across Surf Avenue, one block west of Nathan's famous home of the Frank and land of the sea. The, the evening service performed in the parking lot of Kosher King, home of the Bubby Burger, king of kosher fast food for the whole mishpucha. Well, while right across the street in Gargiulo's fresh homemade manna gut was slithering down the throats of newly made men as my own fresh homemade manhood was slithering down the throat of God's supplicant in spandex whose beautiful beatific brown face and big pair of round enlightened eyes were summoning my spirit and devotion with pious compassion and scholarly skill stiffening my loyalty to the grand Rebbe Donna Summer whose Bad Girls album cover was the Talmudic tome of my covenant with God to sit with myself in holy <laughs> contemplation that long hot Hebrew summer of 1979. Now I'm rocking back and forth on the boardwalk, davening on the boardwalk, chanting the first line of Kaddish, the prayer for the dead, the only line of it I know, looking, looking out over the edge at the empty lot where the thunderbolt used to be and the believers used to go before they bulldozed it into oblivion. I'm yearning for the Yiddish of my grandparents. The Yiddish, I didn't understand how much I yearned to understand. The Yiddish usurped by the Hebrew. The Hebrew I learned to read but not to understand. Some vague repeated phrases about some far off holy land. The Hebrew letters I learned to read but by the day after were all Greek to me because somehow I understood that Yiddish is undulating deep down in the earth. Somehow I understood without knowing why. Yiddish is undulating deep down in the earth while Hebrew is hovering high up in the sky where the billboards now assert their hegemony over history, promising to flatten all the beautiful old buildings wrought from the salty Coney Island clay, buildings to be touched like terracotta Yiddish letters, protective elders watching over me on my bar mitzvah day. Thirty years of lost loves later, the red ball of fire is falling toward the water. Thirty years of battles against bigotry under my belt, I've once again woken up way too late not to chase down one last chance to feel how the daylight might have felt. The parachute jump light and the purple painted sunset is signaling, signaling to the bright full moon. Go back and hide behind the cloud. You've entered the scene too soon. There's the tired mother of four screaming at her little kids, get over here, we are leaving now. There's the high school girls laughing in bikinis, lingering in the night, pretending not to care who, where, why, or how. There's the homeless woman, pushing four wagons, two at a time, for about 40 feet, then stopping to go back for the other two wagons as I watch from my hard wooden boardwalk bench seat. She asks me for the time, and when I tell her, she yells, I can't believe it took one hour just to get this far. I need to be there now! Then calmly says, thank you, dear. Have a beautiful day. <laughs> and all I can do is think to myself, wow, there's the little girl digging in the sand, the whole world riding on that shovel in her hand.